Hey everyone, hey Facebook world. So, uh, Monday Night Live, hopefully a lot more successful than uh, with Paulo uh, the other night. We had a lot of, um, a lot of technical difficulties on our live the other night and uh, hopefully no technical difficulties, uh, difficulties outside of my own speech. Uh, but here we go. Hey Sarah, thanks for jumping on. Um, so what I want to talk about tonight, and uh, this all just sort of, I mean, started recently in particular, but uh, just through our, I mean, through Andrew and our business and our day-to-day -day life, talking to a lot of people who are, you know, looking to, in, like, you know, change where they are in life and looking to increase their income in life, looking to add more, you know, uh, money into their life, more investments into their life. Hey, Maddie, thanks for jumping on, mate. Mick, how you doing, mate? Um, getting just sidetracked, as usual. But uh, yeah, so we're talking to people who are you know, looking to put money away, they're looking to put money aside, create you know, extra income streams into their life and extra financial security into their life. And we're working with people every day. Now from that, what is happening is that people are obviously looking into investing, which is awesome, which is fantastic and, and I love that. I'm talking to people a lot and they're saying, how do I start in investing? What should I do? Where should I start? Like property, shares, what is it? And I even had that, we had dinner on Sunday night down on the Gold Coast with some really good friends. And one of the guys at dinner with us there, Kieran, was like, well, you know, I'm really keen on shares, but you, you know, you're more property. Like, what's, why are you more property? Why wouldn't you go shares? Like, cause, you know, these are the advantages I'm seeing in the share market and stuff like that. And it prompted me to, to sort of really just having this conversation of what is the reason you're actually wanting to invest? And that's what we have to work out before we even go down that path. Like before we jump into the stock market, before we jump into the property market, you know, the, the currency market, the options market, you know, the business, whatever it is, whatever you're gonna, like, the thing is there's so many investment options out there. There are so many different ways to invest. And even if you just look at property, you know, I mean, property, the great Australian dream, having that investment property, all that kind of stuff, that's fantastic. But there's many ways to do property investment. Okay, you can be a flipper. You know, you can be someone who comes in, value adds, renovates, or gets like a, a DA or something and flips. You can be doing options and then, you know, get an option on a property, put the DA in, get an investor in, and then sell it off. You can be just that long term buy and hold. Okay, you can be someone who's investing in, you know, short term, like commercial and industrial property or something like that, which is going to bring in a higher rent, or you're investing for more like the capital gains in a, like a residential property thing. There are so many ways to do property investment alone. And you can, hey Diane, good to see you. And you can do the same thing with the shares. Like, I mean, you can buy and hold shares. You can be like that classic, classic bottom drawer trader, you know, buy something cheap and then just put the share certificate in your bottom drawer and don't touch it for 30 or 40 years. Or you can be in the options market. You can be day trading, you can be like, you know, in e-minis, in bitcoins, in currencies, you know, options, calls, puts, all those sorts of things. There are so many ways to do the share market. What we have to do before we put a single cent into the game is we have to know why are we actually doing this? What is the actual goal of the investment? And that is the very first step. Like you want to get healthy, you want to set the New Year's resolution. What's the actual goal? How many kilos do you want to lose? How far do you want to run? How many, you know, what do you want the centimeters around your waist? How many bench presses do you want to do? How many push-ups do you want to be able to do? That kind of thing, right? You need to have that goal if you're going to be successful. It's going to be the same in investment. What is the actual reason to invest? What is the goal that you're doing? Are you investing just because it's cool? Just because you read like, you know, the barefoot investor or something and he said, start investing. Okay, cool. Well, I'll start investing, but why? And where are you at in your life? What is the actual goal of the investment? So for example, I mean, if you're 50 or 60, you're starting to come towards the end of your life, uh, your working life, whoops, sorry. You're coming towards the end of your career, your late 50s, 60s, you come towards the end of your career and you're wanting to like put money away for the grandkids then you're gonna be looking at more like low risk, long term, you know, property shares strategies, like just buy and hold strategies, so that, you know, in 20 years you can sell them and the grandkids can go to a nice university or something like that, you know, like you're putting, you're buying a couple of properties because you've built up this nest egg, you've built up equity in your property, you've saved money over your life, and then from there, 
you're going to invest that and you're going to invest that away. That is your goal. So long-term buy and hold shares or property is a fantastic option for you. Great. But if you're 20 years old and you know, you're know you just married and you're pregnant and you, you know, you're a couple, pregnant couple and don't buy and hold long-term when you're trying to bring some extra cash into your life. You know, because that's not gonna it's not gonna help you tomorrow. If you're looking at ways to invest and you need to bring in like two, three hundred dollars extra a week, buying and holding long term property isn't gonna work for you. You either need to look into you know some kind of business, some kind of side hustle, you need to look into short term investment strategies in the markets like options and stuff like that, higher risk, okay. This is not financial advice, but you need to be looking into more of those kind of areas because they're more suited to you actually wanting cash flow over capital gains. Okay, you're wanting to find investment strategies and tools that are going to bring in extra cash to your life, as opposed to the 60 year old who's about to retire who wants to put some money away and in 20, 30 years that property or share portfolio can be sold, unlock $100,000 and pay off all the hex fees and school fees, right? Maybe you're in the middle and you're earning too much money, and you know, and you need to like you know, buy like a hobby farm or something because you need some tax deductions. You, you're buying stuff that, so you can have tax deductions because you're just earnings are too good, okay? Then, then you're gonna go into a completely separate investment vehicle. So we have to understand that just simply investing, like there are so many options. It's like exercise, how are you gonna go out and exercise? Are you gonna ride a bike? Are you gonna lift weights? Are you gonna do CrossFit? Are you gonna run? Are you gonna do triathlons? Are you gonna do, you know, Triathlons, Ironman, it's like, you know, you're gonna road bike, you're gonna BMX, you're gonna mountain bike. Like, there are all these little subsets, and we just need to understand that there are so many great options, so find the right one for you and your goals. What fits your risk profile? What fits your goals of cash flow, of capital gains, and risk profile? And you will find the right one for you. So, for Angie and I, it is property. You know, property is our thing, and I have tried pretty much all the other things. I've tried like the you know the, the options I've tried the currencies I've tried the share market I've tried equities I've tried you know e-commerce and stuff like that to an extent in the early days and didn't have success there had success with it down the track since but you know there were a lot of other things that came down to what was the thing that we were doing so Angie and you know, I had a great business or have a great business that throws a lot of cash flow so property is our thing so that we can put money away in invested vehicles for the kids so that when they turn 18, it's like, well, here you go, okay? Here you go, off you go, and change the world with that money that we've helped set you up with. Go and get started there, okay? That's what works for us. So that's why we choose property, and that's why we just focus on property. If you wanna get into the share market because it suits you better, because it's more liquid, because it's more cash flow, like dividends and options and stuff like that, how about it? Awesome, amazing. But what you need to do what you need to do after you've created that first step, like whatever that goal is, whatever the reason for investing is, okay, go out and do the research, find the vehicle that's gonna help you with that, and then from there, you need to read like 10 books at least, or find a mentor. Find someone who has done what you wanna do. So if it is property, go to the library and find, like, find five, 10 books on property and read them first. Because what you will learn in like $5 worth of library fees versus putting 50 grand into a property, into your first property investment that was a bad decision in the wrong area or the developer went bust or something like that, okay? And I learned that one the hard way. You will lose tens of thousands of dollars you could have saved if you just read that book for $5 at the library. Now, boring, I know, but hey, that's the reality. If we can read these books, learn, find the mentor, work with them, do that, yeah, it might take you a few extra months to get started, but you will just accelerate from there. So we have to understand that there are so many great ways to invest. So, so, so many great ways to invest. They all have risk, they all have reward, okay? They've all got a cash flow or a capital gains component, they've all got an element of risk, and they've all got a, you know, a financial reward of some sort at the end, either short, medium, or long term. You need to know why are you investing? Are you investing for your family right now? Are you investing for generations down the track? Are you in 20 and you're smart and you're entrepreneurial and you're putting money aside right away now? All the things in the world in the middle. 
what is the investment that's actually going to work for you? And I hope this is helping. Like, I mean, let me know if this is helping and making sense. But if that's the investment vehicle that's going to work for you, then just go up and read up about it. Read up, you know, find that mentor, you know, read the blogs, listen to the podcasts, read the books, and just immerse yourself in that for a couple of months. There's so much amazing free education out there. You get that free education, you get that mindset, and then you'll know, then you can walk in to the property. You know, you can walk into the open home. Like for Angie and I know, we've just been doing it. We've been doing this property investment thing for like 10 years. So you can just walk into the open home and like, yep or nay, straight away we know exactly what we're looking for. We know exactly what fits our profile, you know, and we can just tell the real estate agents, hey Maddie, this is what I'm looking for. This is my budget. Let me know when it comes up. And then investing is easy because the real estate agent rings us. But that just came from reading the books, doing the study, listening to the mentors and having the exact goal of what we wanted to do. Hey Brad, thanks for jumping on there. So guys, I hope that makes sense and you know, please don't take any of this as like, go out and do it. I am definitely not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to do the opposite. I'm telling you to make sure that before you put a cent in any market, know if it's the right market for you, okay? There are great things and the conversation I was having with Kieran the other night at dinner, like there's many reasons to be in the share market. The share market has many, many positives. It also has risks, okay? And to me, the certain negatives and the certain risks don't aren't as strong as what property offers us for what Angie and I do as a family and what we want to do for our kids. So it's purely that reason, okay? There's lots of great cars out there. Are you looking for the powerful car or the family mover? Are you looking for the cheap, efficient motorbike, okay, or the two-cylinder car? Or you're looking for the loud, like, you know, V8 engine, okay? It's up to you. Find the right one and just get really good at it and go from there. But you have to have a goal in your investment. Otherwise, you're just throwing your money into the market and you've worked really hard, you've worked really, really hard for that money and you're just throwing it to the market and hoping it sticks, like throwing money against the wall and hoping it sticks. So guys, I hope that helps. Um, you know, any, any time you get any questions, obviously just sing out and ask, pop them up below, stuff like that, and I will reach out and answer them for you. But otherwise, guys, we'll see you next time.